Hello viewers, welcome to the CAP RMF training. If you have not subscribed to my channel, be sure to subscribe as we proceed with today's topic. Today we'll be looking at risk assessment. Risk assessment. And we'll quickly define what is a risk. Now, risk can be defined as the potential for loss, damage, or destruction of an asset as a result of a threat exploiting a vulnerability. Now, risk can be determined by multiplying likelihood multiplied by impact. Now, what is likelihood? Likelihood is the probability of a potential vulnerability you know, may be exploited within the construct of the associated threat environment. Likelihood is what is the likelihood that a threat agent will exercise a vulnerability. Now, impact. Impact is the magnitude of harm or severity of damage that can be expected to result from the consequences of unauthorized disclosure, modification and destruction of information or the loss of information or the system availability. Impact is what is expected as a result of a threat agent exploiting a vulnerability to cause damage to an asset. Now we'll be looking at some of the risk options. What are some of the risk options? Now the first risk option is that we can accept a risk. A risk can be accepted, risk acceptance. Now in certain cases, it is cheaper to leave an asset unprotected from a specific risk rather than make the effort and spend the money to protect the, to protect the asset. The risk and all options must be considered you know, before accepting the risk. And I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you a scenario of a car and an insurance company. You bought a car for $500 and you contact the insurance company that you want to insure your, you want to insure your car. And they tell you that, okay, your monthly premium is going to be $250 monthly. Now, when you now thought of it that if I'm paying two hundred fifty dollars monthly and the cost of the car is just five hundred dollars every month, so by the time I pay two months premium, I've paid off the cost of the car, and by the time I keep paying for the rest for the next one year, I've overpaid, you know, for the cost of the car. So what's going to happen? You will decide to accept the risk of the car being stolen, because if the car gets stolen, you can easily afford to, you know, to cough out, you know, additional uh, another five hundred dollars to buy another car. Now, so it, so it is in an organization. If they weigh the risk, you know, of them or the cost of them insuring that particular vulnerability, if the cost outweighs the impact to the organization, to the business mission of the organization, they will accept the risk or the risk will be accepted. Now, the next option is risk mitigation mitigate risk risk mitigation this means lowering the risk to an acceptable level lowering the risk to an acceptable level so this comes in a way of you conduct your conducting your vulnerability scan identifying your risk in a timely manner and remediating those vulnerabilities mitigate the risk and i'm going to give an example now in a situation whereby you let's say you have a house and um then arm robbers comes in and you know they rob your home you know and they, they made away with a lot of vital stuff and you now decided to put some alarm system in you know in your home and in some countries that they have like you know uh big gates you know in front in, in front of their home or some some homes here in the us that they have big gates in front of their home now you decided to either put an alarm system or you decided to put a huge gate in front of your home you know so what you're trying to do is 
you are reducing, you are trying to mitigate the risk. That does not mean that when a burglar or a robber comes back, they will not still try to, you know, try to gain access into your home. But that will kind of like prevent them, you know, for, from even making an attempt to come into your home. So you try to mitigate the risk, you try to remediate your vulnerabilities and you try to, you know, beef up your security systems, your defense systems. The next option is risk transfer. This is an insurance model. And you see that most organizations these days are transferring their data to the cloud service provider, you know, for them to accept the risk of their data being stolen or something bad happening to their information. So the risk has been transferred to the insurance company. So that is risk transfer. And I'm also going to give an example of the car. Now, you bought a car for, let's say, $60,000. And the insurance company says, oh, it's going to cost you $250 to, you know, uh, your monthly insurance premium is going to cost you $250. You will gladly pay that $250 to transfer the risk of your car being stolen to the insurance company. So that in case, you know, something happens, the car gets stolen or something bad happens to the car, the insurance company will bear the brunt of them replacing your $60,000 car. Now, um, in risk transfer, this is an insurance model. Like I said, it's a process of you paying an insurance company to, to bear the brunt of your car being stolen or maybe your home. You are paying, you know, your mortgage insurance. If your home gets burnt, the insurance company is going to pay for it. So you are transferring the risk to the insurance company. Now, the next option is risk avoidance. You avoid the risk. A thorough risk analysis should be completed before taking on a new project. You know, let's take for instance that you want to open a liquor business. You want to go into, into selling of liquors. And, you know, we all know that areas that are, you know, kind of like a little bit on the rough side, you know, I believe liquor business moves more in such environments. So, but the risk associated with that is that you may be attacked, you know, bad guys may come into your store and point gun at you and, you know, take all your earnings for the day. So as against you, you may want to move your business away from such an environment, you know, to an average environment whereby the crime rate is a little bit on the, on the low side. And you may not make much profit as compared to when you are in, you know, in, in those rough environments, but you are saving yourself the risk of being shot and saving yourself the risk of, you know, of your, of your profit or your earnings for the day being taken away from you. Same thing in an organization. They move their data, their data center away from region that experience more of natural disasters. They move it to more safe, you know, location. So yeah, they are avoiding the risk. That is risk avoidance. Now we'll be looking at risk assessment. Risk assessment. Risk assessment is the process of identifying a threat and the risk factors that have the potential, you know, to cause damage on an asset. You analyze and evaluate the risk associated with the threat. So, risk assessment is a process of you assessing the risk that is associated, you know, with your information system should an hacker you know penetrate or gain access to your system the table right here shows the risk matrix and as i stated earlier the risk is likely would multiply by impact so i'll be walking you through on how to determine your risk from this table now as we can see we can see the likelihood on the upper left corner and we can see the impact on the right hand side and uh, under the likelihood we see high medium and low and as well as under the impact we see low medium and high now if the likelihood of an attacker or an hacker you know gaining access to an organizational network is high you know based on NIST guideline based on NIST recommendation if the impact is low let's say the the hacker or the attacker you know finally gain access to 
the organizational network and they cause damage to the assets. If the impact as a result of the actor gaining access to the organizational network is low and the likelihood of the attacker or the hacker is very high, then if you multiply the high by low, then your results or the risk will be low. If the likelihood of an attacker is medium and the, the impact is low, then the risk will be low. If the likelihood of an attacker gaining access to an organizational network is low and the impact you know, as a result of them getting access is low, then risk will be low. Remember, anything you multiply by low will give you low. Now, if the likelihood is high and the impact is medium, the risk will be medium. If the likelihood is medium and the impact is medium, the risk will be medium. If the likelihood is low and the impact is medium, the risk will be medium, will be low. Sorry. Now, if the likelihood is high and the impact is high, the risk will be high. If the likelihood is medium and the impact is high, the risk will be medium. If the likelihood is low and the impact is high, the risk will be low. Please note that you know or some or some organization or some agencies risk tolerance may vary this is just the general NIST guideline on how to determine an organizational um, risk level i hope this video is helpful please be sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video thank you for watching